Hi knitters, welcome to PJ Knits. My name's Penny, I live in central Illinois, and this is my knitting podcast on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by. Um, it is Thursday, September 2nd here in central Illinois, and it's sunny, it's beautiful out. I think we're going to lose some of the heat and the temperature is going forward this weekend, so there'll be a lot of knitting on the porch, which we love to do when the cicadas are not blaring so loudly. But um, last night we were able to sit out for a little while and that was so much fun. I do enjoy um, sitting on our front porch and just knitting and it's, it's quiet in the neighborhood right now, uh, except for today, there's some lawn mowing, but that's no biggie. Anyway, so it's uh, it's nice sitting out there and knitting, and we, I always look forward to the fall to do that. I don't know about you, but I love the changing of the seasons, and I know that we still, in my on my calendar, we still have another 20-ish days before summer is officially ended and we're heading into fall, but I know as soon as the calendar changes to September, we all start thinking about fall, and um, but I'm still knitting on some summer shawls, and today's episode is um, entitled Epic Summer of Shawls. And if you've been with me for a while or if you follow on the PJ Knits group in Ravelry, we're doing what we call Summer of Shawls. And this on Instagram this year is hashtag Summer of Shawls 2021. And summer is always a nice time for knitting on shawls because they're uh, projects you can easily take with you to ball games or sitting uh, with people. A lot of times there are, uh, there's a lot of garter involved and you can sit and knit and still have fun with people while you're knitting. Plus, they're great for if you're in the air conditioning and um, to wrap around. And I have found a couple of times I've needed a wrap when I was at my local yarn shop because the air conditioning was on and it was a little chilly. And thankfully, I always have a shawl in my um, trunk and I'll talk to you about that and show you again about that one. But So they're nice to wrap around. So today we're gonna um, kind of talk about some um, shawls that I've been uh, that I uh, finished uh, a, a couple of that I am knitting and um, kind of talk just about shawls in general and calling them epic because there are um, a couple that for me I thought were very very epic so we're going to start with the first one that I have talked about uh, many many episodes this is in um, conjunction with a uh, knit along with uh, Caddy Jacks, and they have been for the last year doing the half and half triangles wrap. This is a free pattern from so uh, Pearl Soho. I've talked about it, showed about it, um, of all my knitting on this, and um, I am knitting, um, I've knitted, finished mine out of linen quill that I also purchased, and it's done. Finally, this epic knit is done. I actually started this in December of 2020, and I finished it last weekend and I did something with this that I have it's very rarely do I ever do and I was for the last few weeks knitting almost solely on it there was a pumpkin hat that I digressed and knitted on but I had been very monogamous in knitting in this because I wanted to get it done part of the Pearl Soho um uh, the Caddy Jacks knit along is Pearl Soho some, has some fantastic prizes that they are giving away some gift certificates um, through Pearl Soho and I wanted to be eligible for maybe perhaps winning one of those so I wanted to get mine done. I used two of their colorways which was um, this one is the eggshell blue and then the other one is the green turquoise. And I did the large one. It is not blocked yet. And I, I'm not sure if I'm going to block it or not. Probably will block it because I would like a little bit more length out of it or width. But it is all done. It is perfectly my colors. I originally bought the green turquoise for a sweater, as some of you may remember. And um, I started knitting on it and I just didn't like it for the sweater that I was knitting. So then I went back and I bought some pink that I was going to put with it. And I didn't really like the pink for me. And finally, it was like a aha penny. Knit with what you will wear and what you love. And so I did. Hence, I have the two colorways that I did. I did um, the wrap and turn method, which is uh, of short rows, which is what the pattern calls for. I know that um, Caddy Jacks, they were doing German short rows. I prefer 
um, wrap and turns. I don't have a problem with holes generally with those. So I really like them and so I use them. And anyway, so here is the completed, finally epic knit. And I'm going to take pictures and I will uh, put on my Ravelry page later. I'm going to do some pictures in front of the door. Um, and I'll put it on Instagram under the Caddy Jacks um, Knit Along um, as well. I'll put it posted in their group. I'll post it in my group, PJ Knits on Ravelry, under Summer of Shawls. And this is just... The nice thing about this when I was knitting it, it's a lot of garter. And so towards the end, it's a lot of knitting on the rows. It probably took me 20 minutes to go back and forth for each one. But the nice thing is it, it grew. And while I was knitting on it quite often, I could fold it over my legs and it kept my, my legs warm because it's, it's a really a huge, huge blanket, which is what I wanted for me because I wanted to be able to cover up on it when I was traveling. And it go, you can't tell, but as I sit here at the top of my chest, it goes all the way down to my legs when I'm sitting. So easily could cover myself up on the riverfront or um, inside. It can be wrapped as a triangular wrap as well. They've shown it that way. Solid colors, you can peek it out. It's gonna be great. I just can't wait to use it. Um, and I proceed using it on while knitting on the porch as well. I just, it's fantastic. And again, it took me what, six, well, we're nine months, let's say nine months to knit on it. But I really do love it. I love the, uh, the way the um, yarn feels. Um, I just highly recommend this. Um, I know that there's a lot of people who are knitting a second one and I thought while I was knitting this the whole time I was knitting I was like I am never going to knit another one of these and you know on hindsight now that I'm done I think I might you know this has potential for a lot of different things easily could go the other way and you know how I love those triangle wraps it could easily go the other way as well so I am super um, stoked about trying to do some um, pictures with this and different ways of wearing it. I just totally love it, guys. So just saying, finished epic project. And I, it, for me, it really was an epic project. Now, I know um, a lot of they're going to meet on the hill um, at Rhinebeck. It's not something that I get to am able to go to, so um, I won't be there. But I will put my finished object pictures out there on all of the places because it's just, it's just too fun and too pretty of a knit to not share with you all. So um, I highly recommend this one. It's a soothing project as well. So if you have some um, things going on that you might want to um, just knit into oblivion, you know, you want to zone out, this is probably um, the wrap shawl for you. Um, it, it got me through some times. It was a great travel knitting project because with the um, taking like even one skein uh, when we would go to our um, son's house, you know, I know that I, I would have more knitting to and from and maybe a little at night, but it was, I knew that I would have enough yarn and that this would hold my interest and that I could put it down on a whim when I was needed. So anyway, um, finished epic project. Wanted to share that with you. So, whips, shawls, you know, <laughs> I'm going to have several to show you today of favorite shawls, but they all, a lot of my favorite ones, again, come out of Folk Shawls by Cheryl Overly. I love this book. I probably um, have several. I do have several. I don't probably. I do. But as far as whips that are in progress, um, <clears throat> now that my biggie's done there, I can start with my back with my christening shawl out of the book and I'm about I at last at last count I thought I was about halfway but I think now as looking this I may not go as long as um, the pattern indicates I may be maybe two-thirds 
or um, a little bit less. So now I can get back to christening shawls. I am using um, a product that you can't, a yarn you can't get anymore. I've talked about this Dale Baby Ull from Dale Garn, but I'm sure there um, are some others. My intention is to make a christening shawl for all of my current grandchildren so that they will have a memory of Grandma Penny and something that they can pass on to the christenings of their future grandchildren. So this is the first of um, four to come and I'm hoping now I can get back on track with it now that I have that big one done. Um, it's a pretty easy pattern to do. It's the Spanish christening shawl out of um, the Folk Shawls book. Um, pretty easy to do. I, I do it during watching ball games um, in the past. So that is one of my shawls. And I just because summer's coming to an end doesn't mean the end of shawls are coming, right? Um, I fully anticipate having a um, continuing on with several of these shawls into the fall and calling it Fall for Shawls 2021. So um, don't think that this is the end of shawls because it's not. Another whip that I have that now that fall is coming as well that I'm anxious to um, work on, I have cast on, and I'm doing this as part of the knit along with the uh, Frivolous and Frugal podcast. They're doing a West Along starting this month, and I am doing the Botanical Shawl by Stephen West. I bought this kit last year from the Knitting Place, and I've just got a little bit of it started here to show. And this is definitely going to be a fall shawl. It was a kit that I purchased last year, and it is a Shibui yarn, and then this is the colorways that's going to be held in it as well. That's the colors that is going to do the variegate on it. So I'm super, super stoked about working on that now as well. And this will continue into Fall for Shawls. It won't necessarily be done in a month, that's for sure. Um, and again, that came from uh, The Knitting Place last year, and it's in my Sandy by the Lakeside bag. <laughs> so that's one of the whips that I have um, in progress. And then um, next up, this is a epic, epic shawl. This is a shawl that will not be completed um, quickly. And I am doing this um, with a couple of friends. Um, first of all, I saw Denise from Lost City Knits was knitting it. And then I saw our friend Holly was knitting it. And then so I got on the phone to my friend Linda P. And I said, hey, Linda, I got a project. Do you want to join me in doing this? And Linda's always fantastic. She's my roomie for knitting camp. And so, <laughs> for Meg Swanson's knitting camp. So, I think I talked her into doing this. And we are doing a shawl that is called the Lurwick Lace Shawl. And this, uh, some people have it in book form. Others, I've had to purchase my pattern from Sharon Miller Direct um, online. And um, I believe it's through her Etsy shop. Sharon Miller. It's called the Lurwick Lace Shawl. Comes in book form and I printed it all off, all the pages in my book. It, the fun thing about this book um, is that it has history as well. It's, a, it's really called A Study in Knitted Lace Design from Antique to the Modern. And she gives us some information in it, um, shows some of the shawls, um, in it, and it's really um, a fantastic shawl, and I can't, I, I it's, it's going to be so much fun, but I will tell you again, it is an epic shawl. This is not something that goes quickly, will go quickly for me, and I will tell you why. <laughs> the reason being, I purchased, and here I'll show you the start of mine, it is very fine lace work. Let's just put it that way. But the thing about this Lurwick lace pattern is it's not a difficult pattern really to do. Get that close. But the point that I'm making on this is 
that it is super fine yarn. Okay, and I will, um, I'm making notes of my shawls in my grocery girl's journal, Debbie. <laughs> um, this is my like shawl notebook. And I'm doing it on a size four needle, Chiagu, because I love that. And I've done, I did a swatch, um, varying degrees of yarn, of needles she talked about. And finally, I got a decent gauge and decent fabric that I liked with a size four. And I think maybe a two or a three she was calling for in the pattern. Um, and so I went all the way back to a one, a two, a three. And finally, with the four, with, my, with help with my friend Linda, we looked at it. And I liked the fabric of my, um, I liked the fabric that I was getting of my shawl with the size four. And so I had my little swatch here. A couple of swatches that I've, that I've done in varying degrees. Now, the thing that I love, 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 love about these shawls, um, and we tested this out when we were sitting at the blend, is with these very fine yarns, um, and granted, I have a small, I have a small finger, but these are the kinds that I love. If you can see this, they're so, they go through a wedding ring. Is that not the coolest thing you've ever seen? And that's what I've always loved about it. Years ago, I was at a Stitches Midwest and Mary had um, um, one that she had finished and she demonstrated this online. But look at that. I have a small for me, I have a small, I have about a three and three quarter ring. But the fabric with that goes right through a wedding ring. Is that not super, super cool? I thought it was super neat. So, granted to say, the yarn is very, very fine. I, um, on mine, I made these little, I originally made these little needle hold, uh, stitch holders, very fine yarn. And what I found with these, which, and the reason you do this with the very fine yarn, with very fine lace, is when you have a um, heavier stitch marker, it kind of uh, spreads your stitches apart, right? So you get a much larger gauge than you really want to. But what I found was I was not comfortable with this. And maybe if I had not used such a soft yarn for my um, stitch marker but what was happening is it was it was getting encompassing into my stitches and it was just driving me super super crazy so what I did is I went back to some um, stitch markers that I had bought on Etsy years ago that have very very fine wires on them and that is what I'm using here to do to create my stitch markers and I have to have stitch markers I am using my cocoa knits stoppers on there because I do not want to lose any stitches in this very fine yarn and I purchased my yarn from Lost City Knits um, and I am using um, a lace weight two ply cone there's uh, 500 grams about 4300 yards on it it comes in a cone and I purchased this again from Lost City Knit, so you can see. This is my cone of yarn that should do my whole shawl. And look again how very, very fine that is. So when I say that it's an epic project, it's an epic project. Um, and I and to not something I'm going to knit during, well, I could knit during a ball game, but usually I try and knit a little bit when it's quiet on that. So anyway. Um, I'm super, super stoked about that, and I know that if you follow um, Denise of Lost City Knits on her Instagram, um, uh, you will see hers progressing much quick, quicker, and, um, and just check it out. So, it's an epic project. <laughs> Um, stay tuned uh, periodically. I'll give you some progress reports on how that is going along. And one of the things that I would not be without when I am knitting lace, and I have one that my friend Debbie made for my um, christening, <clears throat> excuse me, christening shawl, but also for this one is something to hold your pattern in. And this particular one I purchased years ago from Erin Lane at Stitches Midwest. And I am using it for my 
um, uh, shawl for my lace chart and using the um, blue tape so that it will sit on there and um, I'm, I would not be without this. So this is kind of the bag, the bag portion of this uh, particular um, episode. But this is by Erin Lane. So I would not <clears throat> be without that. And one of the books that I wanted to share with you that I have in my library is also from Sharon Miller. It's keeping with that whole heirloom uh, project. This is, um, I purchased from Schoolhouse Press uh, many years ago, I take that back, I did not. I ordered this directly from Sharon Miller and had it shipped. And this is Heirloom Knitting by Sharon Miller, where she goes in, delves into all of the Shetland lace knitter uh, knitting. Um, super cool book. Um, came directly from Shetland, Shetland $30, 30 pounds or whatever was back there, but it has multiple different... Um, Patterns in here for borders. Um, I can't. I don't want to show too much on it. Talks about how to um, deal with mistakes. Uh, really, an encompassing book on um, knitting um, large shawls. And I, you know, possibly there's a christening robe in here. Um, a lot of patterns. Um, there is also she talks about a hat shawl here. This is in a spiral and then just added that to it. And just a really, an, what I want to say kindly is an old world book. Um, just super, super cool um, things in it. And patterns for all of those, all of these things. Um, and again, there's triangle borders that she has put into there. Um, just a super cool book. How to design your own patterns. Um, materials that she used, different shawl centers, how to navigate those, what kind of needles, tension, and lace design. She talks about that in the book. Um, just a wealth of information about Shetland um, lace shawls. And I just, just how to graft has a little interest, interesting picture in there. Um, stitch advice, um, just some really cool things in there. Just, um, knitting tips, um, just a really wealth of information, and I love this book, um, and I can see after doing this and maybe just, just delving into it a little bit deeper, it, it um, just, I don't know, it just makes me want to, maybe it's a winter project to, to really fully in, encompass what's going, what the um, heirloom knitting is all about, um, among other things, and, and, but if, you know, if you know me well or you've been around, you know that easily I can I can shift to the left or shift to the right <laughs> with a, um, a little squirrel moment. But um, I just, I just, it intrigues me. And uh, I want to, in my knitting, I want to go a little bit further. I want to think beyond the quick, quick knit. So anyway, um, epic knit, epic, epic knit that's going on for me right now and um, just stay tuned you just never know where it's where it's going to go so next up I want to talk about my favorite shawls because I have some of those um, and I and some of these will be repeats but um, I have favorite shawls that I I love um, dearly um, I have others that I that I love as well so do not think that this is the only shawls that I love because, but these are ones that I have knit that I really, really, really like. But I just want to do a quick um, shout out of what I'm wearing, first of all. Last year, uh, well, in 2019, my roomie from ZK Debbie um, gave me a yarn, and it was this one right here. And then our intention was for 2020 ZK to have knit a shawl or something because it was always a contest and we were going to enter the yardages in the contest. Well, y'all know what happened last year and ZK didn't happen in person for us in 2020, but we knit it anyway. And so what I'm wearing is called Shadows in the Rain. This is by Melissa Kemmer and this is out of Nomadic Knits 1, the Florida edition. Um, it was finished and started in 2020, meaning I think my date, if I think about it, 
um, was April and I finished it by the end of May. Um, and so I just wanted to share, this is a wrap that I, another one that needs to go, that I forget about a lot, but probably needs to go into my car right now as well for knitting down at the river front or at our local yarn shop while the air is on or even going in when it starts to being colder. But anyway, I wanted to share this one with you and all the yarns that was in it. This was a, as a wrap, which is so warm. It encompasses a lot of different things in it. The blue in here is Mad Tosh um, Light. It is called Button Jar Blue. It was a leftover from a sweater that I knit. This particular one is Wooly Mama. This is the one that I got from my friend Debbie. Um, High Ho Silver. And then this is stitched together. And as blowing out, you can tell, it's called Nuclear Goldfish. And the pink in here is Suburban Stitcher. It is from uh, called Sorry Silk. And so this is a super cool wrap to be wearing inside. And I'm going to pull it out because I'm going to need this in the coming, in the coming weeks. I forgot all about it, and, and it's those juicy colors that I love, <clears throat> which some of these need to go into my blanket that I talked about last episode, the jelly roll. So anyway, wanted to share this with you before I start popping on other shawls. But some of my favorite shawls that I have knit on, first off is First Point of Libra. This one has memories as well. I um, This is by... Um, Laura, Laura Eiler. <clears throat> I bought the yarn at a January thaw, um, and then the follow and it sat in the in the yarn room for a while, and then the following year I had foot surgery, and while I was recovering from foot surgery, I knit this particular shawl, and I had bought the gradient kit. Here we go, the gradient kit. This is a Sun Valley fiber gradient kit, and it's several years old. It is her their sun the it is their MCN uh, merino cashmere nylon and the kit was called Seaside and I used all of the colorways but one and when I knit this one to make sure that the colors would go together um, like I wanted them to and show because one that I did not use got opted out because I used that black and white feature on my taking a picture on a photo with. And when I did that, then I could see that the one colorway that I had put in there just, you couldn't, it, it, it was so close to what was next to it or in the grouping that it, you would never have seen the transition. So I took it out after I took the picture. That way I could tell that it was one that needed to go out. So this is first point of Libra using that kit minus one. And then I also used um, from Sun Valley Fibers, the, this is the, um, MCS and I use this in the onyx you can see it's a little it's black the new onyx that I've got since then is a little bit blacker this had a little bit of gray tones to it this is a wonderful shawl for um, in the winter or um, for wearing with turtlenecks which I love it is a triangular shawl very fun to knit again all garter and as I recall we started up here and went all the way down and then did so there was a lot of um, fun things in that so I love this particular shawl I love a triangular shawl for many many reasons the fun ways to wear it and like I said I love it with a turtleneck um, in the winter time or whatever as it comes up you can wear it whichever way you prefer. I, you know, I always, and you can do it on the corner. We've seen a lot of that on the corner and showing off that. So I just love this one. Again, this is First Point of Libra, Laura Ayler. Um, and the intention was to wear it when she was at the following year at um, Sun Valley Fibers January Thaw, but like I said, it didn't get there. But anyway, I'm just loving this one. It's one of my favorite. It is soft. The yarn is super, super soft, and I think that is um, a lot of it. Now, there is also a little trend going on here. Another favorite, um, two trends, colorway and book. This particular one is out of the Cheryl Oberly book, Folk Shawls, that I'm going to show you. This is the Feather and Fan Triangle Shawl. 
Um, this one you've heard the story about before, but I'm going to repeat it again. This particular um, yarn was hand spun by my friend Linda Padoko. Um, she is a knitting camper as well. And she, I saw her spinning this on her blog or feed um, one year before camp. And I said, oh, you're, knit, you're, you're spinning that yarn for me. How nice. You knew my colors, you know, and she knows my colors. Well, I really was just, I truly was kidding, guys. <laughs> I really was kidding. And that year when we went to knitting camp, she gifted me um, at her show and tell the yarn for this. And so then the following year, I knit the shawl for me. For myself from my show and tell and this is it I love this super super two things super super soft a gift from a dear friend a dear knitting camper that made us feel so welcome at knitting camp every year I love 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 it and it was two two or three skeins and so I could use them look at this I love this a huge huge shawl Another one of my favorites for winter time. Look at this. Is that not the coolest? And it brings back fond, fond memories. And again, this is a, a triangular shawl from Cheryl Overly with a little bit of lace on the end. Um, very fun to knit and it's big guys and I love 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 it love it love it <laughs> I can't say it enough um, for everything that it is I'm just I'm still overwhelmed by it when I put it on it is so soft and um, just you know from the sweetness of knitters are they not the coolest oh my gosh guys going to get a lot of wear out of this again at the yarn shop so loving it you can tell that <laughs> it's my colorway and again folk shawls I can't tell you I mean I can't tell you enough about that book there isn't a shawl in there that I don't want to knit and I'm sorry if I keep repeating myself on that but um, I love 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 that one uh, finally the last not the not the last shawl, but the last shawl that I'm going to tell you about out of folk shawls. And this is the one that resides in my trunk. And I pulled out last week when I went into the yarn shop because I knew it was going to be chilly in there. This is Bird's Nest. And again, this is a wrap. And I knit this originally many years ago out of Cheryl's yarn, Just Beautiful Alpaca. And it did stretch on me, but it has kept me warm over my legs and around my body um, easily and it's a long one another pretty super simple pattern it's knit lengthwise but a pretty easy pattern to keep keep tabs on while you're knitting it easily done and her yarn is just so freaking warm she does not unfortunately she does not dye anymore or sell her yarn anymore but I have a couple up in my stash, and I love this. And again, well, you know where it came from, but um, it's beautiful. I just beautiful. It is soft. It is um, comforting as well. Let's just put it that way. And then last, my last uh, favorite shawl, epic shawl that I want to tell you about is, um, is not one I knit either. This particular one is called the Pie Shawl. It's by Elizabeth Zimmerman. And this particular one was knit by my friend Char, who was um, a knitting, um, a radical knitter back in the day when we had a group, um, a good friend. Um, she went to knitting camp with us for quite a few years. Um, Char passed away several years ago. Um, her husband just passed away recently, which was very sad, but you know, um, but they're together now. And when she passed away, her children were getting rid of some of their things and um, of her things and a lot of her yarn and passed it on to um, the knitters. 
And um, this was, there was some shawls in there as well. They didn't know what to do with. And I asked if I could have this one. This one was knit by Char. I remember her knitting on this at knitting camp and probably doing a show and tell, but this is the pie shawl by Elizabeth Zimmerman. It is done in very fine yarn. It is a treasure because I know that Char knit it and was a, she was a wonderful knitter. And so it has very, very fond memories of her knitting on it, of our time together, of our friendship, of how it came together through knitting. Um, I think that's, that's the thing about knitting, isn't it? We have, I, I know that I have, I'm enriched by the many knitting friends that I have met all through this craft. Um, I just can't tell you how much that means to me. <laughs> um, you know, they're there for you and they understand and um, I am truly blessed. But anyway, this is a work of art. Um, I do not wear it, but I do display it occasionally and pull it out in my room just to look at it. And you can see this. And I'm going to hold it here just for a moment so that you can get a full view of it without me talking. Beautiful. And circular shawls, you know, people, you know, have problems with maybe wearing them, but you certainly can wear, fold this in half, fold it in three quarters. If you're planning on knitting a pie shawl, which I am of my own someday, you certainly can do it three quarters. Hangs down low on your back. You can spread it around. This particular one, I might give thought for a, for a um, christening shawl. Most definitely, guys, would be perfect for a christening shawl, and you could do it out of a lace weight or a little bit heavier as I am. I'm just saying that I, it just hit me. <laughs> I, don't, I can't believe that it took me all this time to think about that. It could be an excellent christening shawl. Wow. So truly an heirloom, a treasure, um, a gift that I um, brings me back memories every time I pull it out. I wanted to share that with you. So Anyway, that's the end of some of my favorite shawls. There will be others down the road because I have a shawl collection and I have things that I want to share with you. Now, next up, what do I want to cast on? Well, first of all, with the warmer weather coming, warmer weather going away, sorry, cooler weather coming, I went to my closet and I started thinking about things that I'll want to wear in the transition period for clothes. And I have this particular top. No, I think it's three quarter sleeves, okay? And so I thought to myself, <laughs> I want a shawlette or something to wear with this. So I went to my yarn and I pulled yarns out. And I think I have one that will blend really well with this. And so I'm thinking about casting on the Grand Canyon shawl. This, I do not believe this pattern is available. Um, I bought it, I got it as part of um, uh, a Kickstarter program for Knit Circus Yarns way, way back when called the Grand Canyon shawl. And I think I'm going to put, use this yarn for it. And I think it will go perfect. <laughs> I think it'll go perfect over here, right? <laughs> if it can stay in my hands long enough. Don't you think that'd be cool? So, this is called um, Greatest of Ease. It is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and it's called Tide Pool. So, I want to cast that on, and I think that will be a fairly quick um, little shawlette. It's just 400 yards. It's quick and easy to do. I know that um, Jilo ha Jila has other um, quick uh, patterns out there that would go well for that as well if you can't purchase that. But I thought this would be fun taking something out of my stash, out of my library to match something in my wardrobe. So I'm super stoked about wanting to cast on that. Um, and that's what I really want to cast on in the way of shawls right now. 
Okay, last, almost last up here is mail call. I have to share this coolest thing. My friend Annette turned me on to this and I was punching the button before I was barely saying thank you. But I received, I bought online a new watch band. Look at that, for my Apple Watch. It's black with little turquoise yarn balls. And the details on this is, this came from Tangerine Designs. Uh, she's Tangerine 8, the number 8 on Etsy. And she's at, uh, at Zephead8 on Instagram. And she now had, at least last couple of days, she had ones with pink and ones with purple. But super, what a way. It, it was like, bam, I had to have it. Thanks, Annette, for turning me on to that. I wanted to share that mail call. The funny thing about Tangerine Designs, years ago, I bought a project, a drawstring project bag from her. And it was probably one of my very first project bags I ever bought. It's got little gnomes on it, Christmas gnomes. Um, super, super cool. So I was so pleased to see this. Again, Tangerine Designs for your Apple Watch. Um, and you can choose the size. I have a small wrist, so I got a small one. But anyway, isn't that cool? I just think that's just too cool. I am a, I am, you know, when I, she had me at Watch Band because I love to change up my watch bands for my watch and go with the color or whatever. So anyway, ah, all right, guys, that's all that I have for you today um, in the way of epic shawls. Remember, Summer of Shawls 2021 is going on for another 18, 20 days. We've still got a lot of that to go. It will morph into fall for shawls because we're not stopping just because the fall time's coming. Um, so post your stuff in the group. Tell us about some shawls that you're knitting or, or if you're knitting along with others. I'm a, I'm a knit along person. Like every time somebody starts a knit along, I want to do it. And I, and, um, and a lot of times I join in. So anyway, that's, that's going to be ongoing. Next time we get together here at PJ Knits, um, we're going to talk about transitional sweaters because right now, yeah, I am finishing up the last of a summer sweater. But I think if I make if I have enough yarn and the um, yarn holds out, I might do it like three quarter sleeves. So it will be a transitional sweater. I'm going to share out of my wardrobe some of my transitional sweaters for you. Talk about ones that I'd like to be knitting as well, and we'll probably kick off you know talking about fall sweaters because you know right now you should be starting your fall knitting right. But if you're still knitting on summer, that's perfectly fine as well. Post about it in the uh, group. I want to tell you I am Penny J on Ravelry. I'm having I am Penny J on Ravelry. <laughs> I am PJ Knits on Instagram. Our Ravelry group is PJ Knits. And if you're doing um, some shawls for summer, I'd love for you to tag us at hashtag summer of shawls 2021 um, among other things on Instagram. I am a I'm a big hashtag person. So anyway, um, that's all I have for this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, please subscribe. If you have questions, put them down below. Um, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you for the comments that we get. Um, I am building some friendships through those comments as well. And um, I do appreciate that. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, and um, with everything that's going on, I hope you are knitting on with confidence and hope. And we'll catch you on the Pearl side. Thanks for joining. Bye.